pandemic, the continent of Africa is facing another plague, locusts. A special event at one of Islam's holiest sites, Mecca in Saudi Arabia, took place and shocked the world. The Grand Mosque was besieged Fatijd by a strange giant insect during the Ramadan rainy season. This incident made worshippers extremely worried and raised many questions. Questions about the true identity of the insect tribe were discussed, and the answers made the situation more tense. It's the grasshopper, an animal that appears in the Bible that makes people worry about what's going on. What is its true nature? Was what happened simply a natural phenomenon? The incident that happened in Mecca, the holiest city of Muslims, makes people think of signals from Jesus? Is this a punishment for Muslims? Let's dive into our world to find out the best answer. Uh, but don't forget to spend a few seconds subscribing and turning the bell to watch interesting videos on our channel. Mecca is considered the center of Muslim spiritual activity. This city was the first place on earth to be worshipped because it was here that Ibrahim and his son Ismail built the Holy Kaaba, a center of the Islamic Church, a place that attracts pilgrims every year. From the dawn of its birth until Islam spread throughout the world, Mecca still plays an important role for two reasons. Mecca is forever the center of mandatory pilgrimages for Muslims. Islam and Mecca are the focal points of Islam. According to legend, this is the hometown of Patriarch Muhammad. Legend has it that Allah sent the angel Gabriel to convey the divine edict and reveal to Muhammad the truth of the Quran for the first time. Now this made him a saint with a mission to accept the mission given by his true master to begin the work of spreading Islam. He was the founder of Islam and Mecca became a place of pilgrimage for Muslims all over the world. Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca, is the fifth of the most basic precepts of Islam, also known as the fi five pillars of Islam. Muslims, both men and women, who are physically and financially able must perform hajji at least once in their lives. When entering the mosque in Mecca, believers will first circle the Kaaba seven times counterclockwise. Next, we'll kiss the sacred stone placed in a silver frame in the southeast corner of the building. When mentioning the Kaaba, people immediately think of the black cube and its mysteries. The Kaaba, with its famous meteorite, covered with black cloth woven with gold motifs is the most important place in Mecca. This shocking news made Mecca the center of attention of the whole world. A massive swarm of locusts has plagued Mecca as officials struggle to remove the infestation at Islam's holiest site. Swarms of desert locusts invaded the holy city of Makkah, while millions of them landed on Makkah Tower's clock to completely hide it from people's view. Shocking footage posted on social media showed how the locust swarms covered the Great Mosque in Saudi Arabia. Other images also show locusts buzzing around light fixtures, clinging to marble surfaces, and even blanketing, spraying pilgrims. The Makkah municipality confirmed the phenomenon, which residents claim has never been seen before. This event worried Muslims a lot. In the Bible, Locusts frequently appear as symbols of divine wrath and destruction, or the eighth plague of re-Egypt, and as described in the book of Exodus, stands as a prime example of this symbolism. The locusts uh, served as a stark reminder of God's authority and the consequences of, of defying his will. Moreover, the prophet Joel prophesied a great locust plague here that would precede the day of the Lord, a time of judgment. <laughs> These biblical accounts of locust swarms can be interpreted as harbingers of divine intervention, urging humanity to repent and turn to God. Mm, let's take a few minutes to remember the story of Moses and the Ten Commandments as mentioned in the Bible. 
But to be more specific, it was the story of ten plagues in Philitron, Hael, inflicted upon ancient Egypt as a divine punishment. In the biblical tale, Moses, a prophet and leader of the Hebrews, whom the Jewish people consider to be their ancestors, warns the Pharaoh, ruler of Egypt, that plagues would ravage his kingdom if he did not free the Israelites and allow them to go back to Canaan. As the story goes, the Israelites came to Egypt at the invitation of a Pharaoh, a Jacob, one of the patriarchs of the Hebrew Bible, was the leader of the group that migrated to Egypt. At some point, these people lose their status as free people and are enslaved on the orders of a pharaoh who is jealous of their growing prosperity. Meanwhile, Moses grows up in the royal household of Egypt, not knowing his true identity. In due course, he becomes aware of his descent and is ordered by God to lead his people back to Canaan. This is what brings us to the story of the Ten Plagues of Egypt. Now, oh, of the Ten Plagues, the eighth one was that of locusts. And Moses warned the Pharaoh that God would send so many locusts that they would cover every tree of the land and eat all that was there to be eaten. Every time the Pharaoh refused, a fresh plague was inflicted upon his kingdom. There are over 30 mentions of locusts in the Bible in 17 Old and New Testament books. Bible passages with detailed images of locusts and historical accounts of locusts' devastation to crops are found in Exodus, Psalms, Jeremiah, Joel, and Revelation. A locust invasion is a death sentence for the people of Egypt, an agrarian society that depended on their crops and trees for survival. It was awesome, eh? They would and do experience famine without their crops' produce. The damage the locusts did in Egypt was nothing short of brutal. Due to their incredible ability to destroy crops and property, swarms of locusts are used as a symbol of evil forces throughout the Bible. Clearly, Old Testament locust outbreaks and attacks on people's property represent destruction and devastation. That's what happened in Egypt. So what about the locust storm in Mecca? Is it simply a natural phenomenon, or is there something more tragic behind it? As believers in Christ, we can find comfort and wisdom in the Word of God during these uncertain times. The locust invasion during the Muslim month of Ramadan rains bores upon us to contemplate her the spiritual significance of such events. By examining the biblical accounts of locust plagues, we can find inspiration to seek the face of God as we anxiously anticipate the return of Jesus. We cannot stop doubting the origin of this strange phenomenon. The image of grasshoppers is not far away when it appears in the Bible. We are also no longer curious about the meaning of the appearance of grasshoppers. What makes us curious now is that if it is truly a signal from God, what do we need to do? What do you think about this event? Ian, please reveal your opinions in the comments section. We will wait for you there. Now, the imagery of the locust invasion uh, serves as a powerful metaphor for the consequences of sin and disobedience. The locusts symbolize the consequences of the people's rebellion against God's laws, just as sin can devastate and destroy lives. The prophet calls the priests and the leaders to gather in the house of the Lord and mourn for the desolation of the land. The destruction of the crops not only affected the physical well-being of the people, but also disrupted their spiritual connection with God. Joel sees this as a call to repentance, urging the people to turn back to the Lord with all their hearts to seek his forgiveness and mercy. Ah, as Joel continues his narrative, he reveals that the locust plague is not just a natural disaster, but a manifestation of God's judgment. The Lord is using this catastrophe as a wake-up call for his people, a way to shake them from their spiritual slumbers and bring them back to him. Joel speaks with urgency, imploring the Ipiasi, a we, people to fast and weep, to rend their hearts and not just their garments, in a sincere expression of repentance. 
the prophet sees a glimmer of hope during the darkness. He calls upon the people to cry out to the Lord and plead for his compassion and mercy. Joel emphasizes that God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He encourages the people to believe in God's willingness to, to relent from sending calamity if they genuinely turn to him with contrite hearts. Joel stresses that the day of the Lord is near, a day of reckoning and judgment. For all the nations, the locust plague serves as a foreshadowing of the more significant and final judgment that will come upon the world. You know what? And God used a locust swarm as a judgment to call Israel to repent of their sins. Why did God use this insect to punish Israel? While tragedies such as a locust swarm are not always a sign of God's judgment on a community, Joel said that in Israel's case, the invasion of locusts was a call for God's people to repent in fasting and sackcloth. Still today, when tragedy strikes in Mecca, it can be a reminder to turn to God. God can use tragedies and the loss of material things to cause people to seek Him. That's all that we want to share with you in today's video. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe. Your support will be our motivation to make more interesting videos. The newest discoveries will be updated every day, so don't forget to turn on the bell to watch them as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.